General Mukhtar, being an officer of high integrity, started taking that position. Whoever plotted to implicate General Yaradwa started having fever. Is this man, is this general going to go like that? Whereas we want him out of circulation to facilitate self succession? No. They search his house, they find a submachine gun, which he has been carrying since 1976. Our okay. people Yes, this is illegal. You know, illegal possession of firearm. Knock it on him. If you think you can escape from this, you can't escape from this. But Kone Wandike has already raised a serious problem. My Lord, things now started happening in quick succession. DMI cannot play the game that is required of him. They had a ready person who will play that game. General Mukhtar was immediately posted out of Nigerian Intelligence Corps. In order not to give any indication that he was being punished, he was told that he was being posted as Chief of Defense Intelligence, a higher appointment in the intelligence system. No problem. Very good. So he was happy. Except that when the posting came out, he was posted to an obscured office in DHQ. And General Sabo, with a mission, without any previous intelligence training, other than that spirit of vindictiveness, other than that attribute of ability to tell lies, was now brought in on 30th March 1995. It has never happened before that in the process of serious investigation, coup, you will change DMI. My Lord, that was the reason. Therefore, Sabo came to Nigeria Intelligence Corps with a mission. Mission statement. Jail of Basanjo, Jail of Yaradwa. The case of Truman Zeribi was another high point of the Human Rights Violation Investigation Commission. In 1997, an Anambra businessman, Truman Zeribi, was arrested and detained in connection with the discovery of bombs and other sophisticated weapons buried in his compound in Hiala. This was at a period in Nigeria's history when several bombings were happening around the country. According to Nzeribi, the arms found at his compound had been planted there by military men to implicate him in illegal arms dealing. He alleged that the plan was to eventually kill him while he was in their detention. However, investigation later showed that Mr. Nzeribi was a victim of a setup by the infamous Lagos businessman, Chief Victor Kafo, popularly known as Ezegu, who was known for his lifestyle of outrageous flamboyance. As the story goes, the trouble started when a film on the exploits of Ezegu, one of the kingpins of 419 in Nigeria, was watched by the Inspector General of Police, Alahaji Ibrahim Kumasi, sometime in June 1997. Most worrisome to the IG was the nature of the sophisticated weapons at the disposal of the suspected criminal and members of his gang. A contingent of 1,200 crackmen drawn from mobile police units in Benue, Plateau, Niger, Kaduna, and Sokoto states were given the assignments of arresting Ezeigo. 600 of them were to bust his home at Hiala, and the rest were to go to Lagos where Ezeigo had most of his businesses. They were basically out to look for information on the sources of Ezeigo's sudden wealth and to see if anything incriminating could be traced to him. In the early morning of June 25, 1997, the security men stormed their targets. Several people were arrested with Ezeigo. They were soon released, but Ezeigo was detained. He was later given a clean bill by the police and therefore released. Immediately after his release, Ezeigo went after those he believed to have masterminded his harassment by the police. He was said to have planted some weapons at the backyard of one of them, Chuma Zerebi. The plan was to implicate the man in illegal arms dealing. The military men sent to dump the weapons there were the same people that came to arrest Chuma. The mission could, however, not be carried to a logical conclusion because it was an unauthorized operation. 
The people at the DMI soon heard about it and the weapons were discovered to have been stolen from DMI. Ezego was detained by the Nigerian military, but within a short period he was released. Truman Zerebi was also later released and in 2001 he petitioned senior officers in the Abacha government for his ordeal in the hands of the military. In this episode, former DMI Colonel Steve Idehere is called to the witness box to testify all he knows about the arrest of Nzeribe. In this explosive revolution, Idehere completely demystified his former boss, Brigadier General Ibrahim Sabo, and made some very strong allegations against him. You are probably going to need a drink and popcorn for this one, and while they are at it, make sure to like, subscribe and share to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Where do you live? I live at Omolia Estate, Ikeja, Lagos. Stephen Ide Henry, I D E H E N R O E. What do you do for a living? I am a retired officer, I live on my pension. <laughs> As and when paid? Well, <laughs> I manage whatever they give me. You have read through the petition on illegal detention by Shishuma Inzeribe. In Very well. Are the allegations correct? They are largely correct. There are one or two areas that are not correct. But I would say 80 to 90 percent correct. I have no doubt to doubt any area I'm not too familiar with. I think they are correct. Who was the director of military intelligence as of 1st July 1997? I was. You? Yes. Okay. Me. Okay. <laughs> Who ordered the release of Shishuma in Zeribe? I did. I ordered his release from detention. Who ordered the preliminary investigation to unnet the truth of the matter? I did. As a DMI, I ordered investigation to know the truth of the matter. Connie. What did you do to these hearing officers and soldiers? Well, I ordered preliminary investigation and found out that the allegation that he was framed up was actually correct. I now arrested all the soldiers involved, detained them, ordered the immediate release of Chief Chuma Nzeribe with an apology to him that justice will be done I detained even Colonel Majegbe, who is senior to me in rank, I detained him and ordered investigation into the matter. Colonel, please tell his commission the names of these hearing officers and soldiers. Uh, the leader is Colonel Ola Majegbe. The others are Captain Dulaga, Warrant Officer Razak. Corporal Ode, Private Aburime, and Private, I think, Cletus. These were those involved. Kone, now there's usually a disciplinary action taken against hearing officers in the army. Sure. Were, were, were this disciplinary action taken against these officers, or they were merely arrested and detained by you? Uh, no. I arrested all of them, and even went as far as to arrest the civilian counterpart, uh, uh, the popular Ezego, Victor Okafo. And we conducted the investigation. A preliminary report was written. And when I left office, these people were still in detention. And I can tell you, investigation continued. And report was sent to Army headquarters. I made quarter forwarded the report to the Director of Legal Services for advice. An advice was given, and the main culprit, Kone Majegwe, was posted to the LGC for jurisdiction to be court martialed. Eventually, he was compulsorily retired from service. So there was a beginning to this process. An offense was committed. It was detected, action was taken, it went through its process, 
it went through its process and disciplinary action was taken. Notwithstanding, somewhere down the line, there were many intrigues, which we may bring out later. Okay. Now, Colonel, please turn to page one of Chief Inzeribe's petition. Please, let me get it. I believe you have a copy with you. I have a copy, but I have to look for it. I have a zero based petition. Okay. Page one, paragraph two. Please read from the second sentence. The entire frame up episode was masterminded by the following Colonel Steve Ide Henry, acting, DM, acting Director of Military Intelligence, DMI, Colonel Maji Igwe, Director of Intelligence Production Center, Captain Dulaga. Surveillance and Operations Team, Warrant Officer Razak, the same team, DMI, Victor Okafor, late patron financier of youth earnestly asked for a bachelor. Uh, assem uh, okay. Mr. Ifiani Unwa Buife, currently at Anambra State House of Assembly, a government agent and Okafor's 2IC, and C.Y. Obuna Diki, Anambra State Chairman of Youth Earnestly Asked for Abacha. There's a last one there. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's one more, number yes. eight. Charles Maduka, CSO to Victor Okafo. Now, Kone, you read through this and your name is number one there. Were you one of those responsible for the frame up, arrest, and detention of Chief Shuma Izerubi? No. I mean, for 10 months, as claiming his petition. No. How could I have been when I was the one who the case was reported to? I arrested even all my officers involved. I set Shuma Izerubi free with an apology to be a little bit civil and made sure the case continued to its logical conclusion. There must be a mix of there. Maybe that's the ten percent I'm talking that this thing is not entirely correct. Okay. Please also turn to page, page two of the petition, Chief is any based petition. Mm -hmm. I'm there, my lord. Okay. Um, you can read from go to paragraph six of the petition, read from line two. Paragraph six, six five. Line two. Okay. Uh, Paragraph I six, page. I suffered okay. terribly right. in the notorious DMI Security Group Detention Center at number A Park Lane with the attendant damage to my health for 10 months of incarceration in a mosquito-infested cell, sorry, over 128 persons instead of 12, was made, the cell was made for. Full stop, please, that's okay. It's all right. Now, Colonel, where was Chief Izerbe detained in July 1997 when you ordered his release? Oh, he was detained in a DMI camp headquarters. Nowhere near security group we are talking about here. Okay, so this is a different place entirely. Very, very different. Okay. Who was the director of military intelligence as at 1st September 1997? Okay, when is this? Let's not go far out. What are we investigating? Human rights violation against this in Zeribe? Yes, yes, my lord. Now, when he discovered that he was wrongly detained, he let him go. What are we pursuing again? He was rearrested, my lord. Rearrested. Re yes, yes, my lord. He was rearrested. We are trying to arrive at somewhere. You discovered that we are wrong. <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Colonel, I mean, who was the director of military intelligence? Brigadier as General I. A. Sabo is here. But Brigadier General Sabo had earlier told this commission on oath that he was not the DMI. That, in fact, he was still at National War College, Abuja when she Shuma Izerbe was detained, I think rearrested. I think you don't know General Sabo. That's why you believe such things. Sorry to say. 
General Sabo was the DMI. As at, in fact, one month before 1st September, after I had released Nzeribe, he has gone a free man. It was when General Sabo came back from war college and I handed over to him on 5th August 1997 and I went to my house to rest that all this concoction, intrigues, whatever, call it any name, started again. He's in a better position to tell you why. I was not DMI, General Sabu. And sorry, I must add, it is normal from what I've heard General Sabu say to this commission. It's not only this case. There's hardly any, any evidence General Sabu has given to this commission that is true. As a former director of military intelligence, I know and I have documents to show. But I'm talking of Chibun Zerube's case now. It is a lie. Who lied? Who lied? General Sabu? He's here. He's here. And he has been telling you lies for the past three months. Three lies upon lies. I will get to that. Okay. Now, Cornel, Cornel Do you have any? Do you have any evidence to show to this honourable commission that you actually handed over to Brigadier General Sabu before first of September, nineteen ninety-seven? Handing over certificate signed by Sabu and myself, fifth August. We signed, he came back from war college, I handed over to him, he took over from me, I went my own, he took over. So that is the handing over certificate. My lord, I seek to tender the certificate in evidence. As a former director of military, Exhibit Four, dated Please, Colonel. In what he said. He said he lied not only here but in other cases. Every single case I've had on TV. Connie, uh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> please, the document in your hand is in evidence before this commission. I would like you to read through it, let everybody know what it contains. Please give him a copy of it. Handing and taking over certificate, Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps. This is to satisfy, sorry, this is to certify that I, Colonel S.M. Idehere, FSS, PSC, MA, having, be give, having given a detailed briefing, both orally and in writing, hereby hand over the command of Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps to Brigadier General I.A. Sabo on this fifth day of August 1997. Signed, S.M. Ide Henry, Colonel, Acting DMI. And that I, Brigadier General I.A. Sabo, FSS, MSS, PSC, OSC, KNOB, FWC. <laughs> Having been given a satisfactory briefing, orally and in writing, by Colonel S. M. Idehere, hereby take over the command of Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps on this fifth day of August 
1997. Signed, I.A. Sabu, Brigadier General, DMI. Colonel, as a former director of military intelligence, please explain to this honorable commission the motives of Chief Shuma Inzeribe's detention for 10 months. I would have liked to say I was not there, like someone else would have said. But as an intelligence officer, I know why he was detained. And I know the motive. You see, General Sabo belonged to a group in the Nigerian army, which I call, and I will explain, the killer group. This group have a trade in stock, stock in trade, falsification, lying. Please, talk into the microphone. Okay, sir. This group, which I call the killer group, which Sabo belonged to, has as his stock in trade, falsification, writing false report, intimidation, coercion, anything, and above all, extreme wickedness of man to man. The hallmark of this group's stock in trade, you can call evil. This group has four members. Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa, Director of Defense Intelligence Agency, who is the person who gives legality to whatever they are doing because of his seniority. Brigadier General I.A. Sabu, I don't want to use any derogatory remark now. Let me just leave it at that. The, the attributes will come out later. Colonel Frank Omenka, who is the person that undertakes all the dirty job for the group. And Colonel Kola Wale Olu, who is the double-faced secretary of this group. Now, during General Basha's era, late General Basha, so many things were said about human rights violation in Nigeria. I can assure you that nearly every atrocity is committed in this country on the military. Because what you don't know is that the military suffered more than the civilians. But everybody is group military. That's why I brought out this group, the killer group. They intimidated this nation. They made General Abasha impotent by feeding him with daily report of perceived and imaginary enemies calling every, anybody that enters their trap is planning to overthrow Abasha. Unfortunately, that is where Chief Unziribe fell into their net. Now, you, you will not understand what I am saying if I do not give you a little bit of insight into the activities of this group. And it also derives from Chief Unziribe's case because this case is very interesting. All the attributes of this killer group, you can trace them to this case. For example, I spend all my time in the military, direction of military intelligence releasing people detained unjustly. General Sabo spent all his time rearresting them. It's, it's incredible. I'm not saying this with mouth. I will show you document which, thank God, four years ago, they were even using against me. What was it? We arrest this person, you release him. We arrest this person, you release him. That was my crime. Thank God Chief Unzeribe came to this commission. And I released him, General Sabo rearrested him. The unfortunate thing, my Lord, is that one would have thought after retirement from service, General Sabo would have learned a, a little bit of lesson in humanity and changed his ways. But he did not. He came to this commission with the same killer group instinct and subjected this commission to a lot of falsehood, lies, deceit, 
my Lord, except you have an insight into the activities, the modus operandi of this killer group, you cannot understand the motive why Chief Unzeribe was detained. Connie, please, I, I want you to tell the commission the activities of this so-called killer group, such that the commission will better appreciate the entire, the, the entire, the motive, sorry, the motive of Chief Nzeribe's detention. And then it will also help the commission to clarify the issue raised in this petition. Thank you. My Lord, Chief, I will just go straight to Chief Nzeribe's petition. I will tell this commission exactly what I know, what happened about that petition. Somewhere down the line, you will find out that some of the things I will say appear like fairy tale. How is it possible? That is where I will need to digress a little bit. But very mindful that this commission has one that we should be petition specific. But I will only digress to the extent that I will use other examples to buttress what happened to Nzeribe and what I am saying. I therefore beg the indulgence of this commission uh, not to hold me uh, foul on a, the issue of digression that I'm not petition specific. Everything I'm going to say is going to have relationship to this petition. My Lord Chief Chuman Zeribe's case. I was appointed DMI on 2nd September 1996 when Jirasabo was going to War College. By July, Jirasabo was on his way back from War College. Then on the 23rd July, one Navy Captain C.O. Ifebuzo came to my office as DMI. He complained that one chief, Unzeribe, was detained in our facilities. He was held for something. And that it is a, it is a prolongation of the politics of Ihiala local government that Chief Unzeribe and Victor Okafo, popularly called Ezego, were involved in the tussle for supremacy at Ihiala. That Chief Unzeribe wrote a petition, false petition, against Ezego Victor Okafo that led to Ezego to be detained in Abuja by the police, a false petition. And now, Ezego is now trying to repay, uh, sorry, Ezego is now trying to repay Chuma by making false allegations against him and planting bomb in his place. I said, no problem. I will look into it. I called an officer, Major Adeka, who is my staff officer grade two. And from what I had, I, I, I'm sorry, maybe I'm biased, I'm uh, biased to some extent. The person involved in this thing was a Yoruba man. The, uh, the, person, the persons involved are Igbos. I therefore deliberately chose a Hausa Muslim person, a Northerner, that will not give me any wrong report. That's how my choice, choice fell on Adeka, who is known to be a very strictly religious person. Within two hours, on the same 23rd, Major Adeka came back to me to say, Sir, there's a problem. Colonel Majek Bay sent some people to here now, and from what I see, he did it in a way that you know there's something behind it. And they really arrested the people this Navy captain has come to release. I said, What? <laughs> now that I'm trying to go after serving so well for how many months? Look at this one. I said, Okay. I, did, I think up to now, I don't know Chief Chuma Zeribe as I'm talking. But I've seen his photograph because I have something with his photograph here. I now ask Adeka, Major Adeka, go to where Nzeribe is detaining all those people. One, release them immediately. So far, you have brought this report to me. Give them a little bit of apology for whatever happened. 
tell them we are going to look into the case and no stone will be left unturned. He released Chief Chuma Nzerebe. By then I became aware that Chuma Nzerebe has been in detention. That was the fifth day. It happened, I think, on a Thursday or so, or Friday. And I got to know about it on Tuesday because I traveled during the weekend. Chief Chuma Nzerebe was released. And we asked him, that's the directive I gave, to be coming because we are going to start investigation. To be coming every day from his house. I now ordered everybody involved in that illegal activity to be arrested and in place of Nzeri Bay to be detained. I now ordered a letter of displeasure because Kone Majegbe, who, was, who is the master of this operation, is actually senior to me in rank. I now wrote a, has directed a letter of displeasure from me to be written to him and all what they were doing to be stopped on that same 23rd. I now directed that since they said Ezego Victor Okafo was the person who plotted with Kone Majegbe to, to arrest Chief Nzeribe. I now said they should go and look for that person and arrest him. To cut it short, my lord, when they went to arrest him, he is a stinkingly worthy person. His house is Palasha, both in Lagos and Ihiala. He had certain escape route. He ran into his ceiling and hid there. They searched all over the house. They could not get him. He just by luck that because the person with the, those we sent were really experienced that they were able to climb the ceiling because somebody told them he was in. They looked everywhere, they didn't see him. So they started searching the unlikely places. They now met our friend hiding in the ceiling and brought him down. I detained him. So my Lord, all those involved, including their civilian accomplices, were detained. I now asked the officer and his team to write a preliminary report because we may require more than what you can do in three or four days. He wrote the report, gave it to me, we put it in the file, and recommended that more action should be taken to discipline the soldiers involved and then to look how, what to be done to Ezego, who masterminded it. Normally, you should hand over such person to the police. This was from 23rd to 28th of July, 1997. On 5th August, 5th August, I handed over to Brigadier General Sabu. And of course, when you hand over a whole unit like that, there's no need saying it that all the pending cases, all those people detained, the report written, everything was, of course, he knew about the case, given to him. My Lord, let me digress a bit to start showing the intrigue of General Sabu. I will get to a point later, but let me just say it now. Why General Sabu was in war college? He never let us rest in DMI. He was still the de facto DMI. Arrest this person, detain this person, I will do this, go and bring this. We arrested, arrested, arrested. We became tired even of arrest. I release, release, release. I didn't even know what to do with detainees again. I left them. They are records to show what I'm saying. I'm not saying it because I just want to make fun. My Lord, I have documents to show. Why in war college? How many people did Asabo told me? Why did you release this man? We said you should arrest him. Why did you release him? I will stick here to that later. Why don't you want to tender them? No, no, because I, okay. because if, you have them, if you have them, my, them, lord, my lord, my lord, I have a it will prepared for each one of you. We have a lot of cases in which General Asabo gave evidence. 
if we have something to show or the type of money is it will help us a lot Ten all of them my lord i am here today as a witness and a friend of this commission amicus courier i am ready to help you correct you are not amicus courier <laughs> you have to be called to the bar first <laughs> My Lord, I am a friend of this commission. I will help you, and I will help this nation. And thank God General Sabo is here. I hope uh, Major Mustafa is here. Because eventually we shall talk and let, let every, I like us to dialogue. My Lord, I have prepared a note for you, all what I'm going to be saying, just for citing. All right. Just three. So that as I'm going on, you will be seeing them. There are some I will not present as exhibit because... Uh, they are not really part of this case. But you just for your sighting, as I'm going, I'll be referring you to those things and you'll be looking at them. My, my Lord, my Lord, I don't know if uh, the colonel can kindly give us copies of this so that we can cross it. He hasn't, ten, he hasn't no. tendered them already. All right, sir. He has them here. In fact, there's one I will not let you see until I've presented it. So, so if you need them, we we'll make copies for you. My Lord, on the 5th August, I handed over to General Sabu. I left DMI. But meanwhile, there has been serious problem between us because I did not do what he wanted me to do was while he was in war college. In fact, like they usually say, I spoiled business for him. And he didn't forgive me. Because all those reports they were sending to General Abacha, I was preferring counter-opinion about General Abacha. This, nobody wants to overthrow you. Nobody wants to kill you. Who told you this man wants to kill you? So that one created problem for them. I will still get to that. I handed over to General Sabo and I went to my house. General Sabo refused to post me to anywhere because he was planning to either send me to jail or retire me from service as at that time. However, the investigation of this case continued under General Sabo. General Sabo now, and I have to bring this very clear, now found a way to say, this case we are talking about, that I knew before Kone Majigwe Anko went for that operation at Ihiala. He said, I knew. I said, okay, prove it to anybody. You can do what you like. He now wrote his report in his normal ways. I will not talk of the quality of those reports now. But he wrote his report, indicted everybody, including me. See, I was his main target. He now forwarded this report to Army headquarters. Army headquarters, in his wisdom and in the way it should be, forwarded the entire report to the director of Army Legal Services for advice. The director of Army Legal Services advised that of all the names listed, Konel Majiegbe is the only person who committed an offense. He should be tried. Because those he sent to Ihiala thought they were obeying a legal authority. However, the advice of Army Legal Service to Army Headquarters was that only Kone Majigbe had a case to answer. And I'm happy to say, the person who signed that, I don't know how he happened, who signed that report, is present here today. Kone Muku is here. And during this uh, process, I wrote a, report, a, a letter to Army Headquarters requesting that that advice and my letter of displeasure to Kone Majigbe be given to me so that I will tender it in this commission. This is the letter I wrote. Because I wrote it in Lagos, I was not, it was not easy to get to Abuja on time. I faxed it to Abuja. 
and I'm grateful to God that even when I talked to the officer in charge of discipline in Army headquarters, he referred me again to Colonel Muku, and I talked to Colonel Muku on phone last him here. So I made effort even to get those documents, but I have not got them before I came here. Now, based on what Army, have you got photocopy? Or? No, I didn't the get anything. Copy? Nothing. I faxed it to them, but I didn't get it. Based, based on legal advice, this case was set forwarded from Army headquarters by the Chief of Administration, whose duty it is to do such things, to Lagos Garrison Command for Colonel Maju Igbe to be tried by court martial. All the papers were prepared. And in the army, you see, staff officers cannot try officers. You must send them to a command. The biggest command in Lagos was Lagos Garrison Command. So to get jurisdiction, you must post the officer to Lagos Garrison Command for jurisdiction. Effectively, Kone Majegbe was posted to Lagos Garrison Command for jurisdiction. He was to face trial. However, because General Sabo failed to get me involved, the hawks started working. They did all the abracadabra they can do. They stored everything until the and as long as General Abasha was alive, nobody can challenge General Sabo. General Abasha was his power base. Everything he's doing, everybody living in Nigeria is against General Abasha. He's the only one who is for Abasha. Therefore, we are all threats to General Abasha. So, as far as General Abasha lived, nobody could try to imagine him because me, the person he was looking for, was not to be tried. Now, God, in his mercies, took General Abasha. The power base of General Sabo gone. Army headquarters now reopened that case that was stalled by General Sabo and set in motion again the process of trying Colonel Maji Igwe as recommended long time ago. Now, my Lord, something happened. Before now, Kone Maji Egbe has been known to indulge in illegal duties. I remember vividly, thank God we have Nigerian intelligence, DMI officers here. In a meeting, because every week we have meeting, one Kone Dari entered the meeting one day and looked at Kone Maji Egbe and said, they say now you they always do illegal duty. When will you stop? On another occasion, Kone Frank Omenka, CEO security group, came fuming that he has report that Kone Majegbe is involved in illegal duty in Apapa. He followed it up with a report. One Colonel Ahmad told me that he was physically present when even General Sabo advised Kone Majegbe to disease from illegal duties. So my Lord, what I'm trying to say is that this Kone Majegbe that did this illegal duty about Chief Chuman Zeribe. He has, he has antecedent. He has been doing it. Why did General Sabo condone him? I will get to that later. However, Colonel Maji Egbe was to be tried. But people, by then, General Sabo has been retired. Yes, he has been retired. Colonel, people now went to the DMI who took over from General Asabo, who is Colonel Dare, they now went to him and pleaded that the whole world knows that Colonel Majegwe is used to illegal duty. You cannot take him to any court that they won't jail him. Look at his. Well, they pleaded that he should prevail on the chief of army staff, who then was General Bamei, to please quietly retire this general, this nuisance, Colonel Majegbe, let him go. <coughs> no problem. General Bahamey now said, you are, you, Colonel Dari went to General Bahamey and presented the plea. General Bahamey said, well, you are the head of the corps. 
I have certain obligation to respect your views. But what you have said now, go and put it in writing. Otherwise, tomorrow somebody will say this and this. We have people here who can corroborate. Konedare, the dear mine, now push this request in writing. That instead of undergoing the whole process of this court martial, let, the, let them just take action, let him be retired. General Bamey now took this letter to Army Council, the highest disciplinary body in the armed forces, the only body that is headed by the head of state that can authorize the retirement of an officer. At that level, it was decided to heed the plea of the DMI, Konedare, and compulsorily retire Konemajiegbe. Therefore, Konemajiegbe was compulsorily retired. And those who know the military system, compulsory retirement is a disgrace. Your services is no longer required. Go! Konemajiegbe was retired. And as far as the Nigerian army is concerned, as far as the military is concerned, this marks the end of that case that started with the <coughs> illegal planting of explosive items in the house of Chief Chuma Unzeribe, illegal arrest of Chief Chuma Unzeribe, illegal detention of Chief Chuma Unzeribe. He was really detained illegally. So, in this case, as far as I know, there is a beginning. There was a process, or a due process, and there was a conclusion. Disciplinary action taken. Therefore, for the army, the case was finished. Not even closed. Finished. However, Chief Chuma Nzeribe, somewhere down the line, not knowing the people he was dealing with, not knowing the organization of the killer group I talked about, thought he was very clever that he could get reprieve. But that's why he wrote petition. But meanwhile, my lord, I want to tell you what went on while investigation was going on. On a magic bit, investigation found out was given money by Chief Victor Okafo. He was given about 200,000, the one we know, Naira. After Chief Chuma Zeribe was arrested, he gave him a BMW car as part of the arrangement to deal with Chief Chuma Zeribe. Because Victor Okafo is popularly called Ezego. When Chief Chu Manzeri wrote a petition against him and he was detained in Abuja here, he looked up and then said, Chai, me, king of money, what can money not do? Who is this small boy to put me in so much problem? I will teach him a lesson. I don't want to go into detail because I don't know. He was able to find his way out of police net in Abuja. He now said, Chuma Zeribe went to police. I will go to the army. This time it's not police. That you will not see light for so many months. I think you went to police. Wait for me. Meanwhile, Chu uh, Ezego knows Kone Majegbe before that time. During the 1997 local government election, both parties, Ezego and, Oka, uh, Ezego and Chuma Nzeribe, were supporting opposing camps, camp, and they were rivals. Ezego, perhaps using his word, prevailed. His candidate was winning, but they did not announce the result. He therefore contacted his friend, Colonel Maji Ebe, said, look, I have a problem. We have won, but nobody is announcing results. Konemajegbe told him, don't worry, I will do something for you. Whether Konemajegbe did something, you know, whether, he did not, whether he did not do, 
I don't know. But as luck will have it, within six hours, the result was announced. Ezego now believed that Kone Majegbe is an almighty person. That is why when he was incarcerated here and he found his way out, the first person he went to was Kone Majegbe. We have be, somebody has disgraced me. What can we do to double that disgrace? That's how they now planned how to plant explosive because as at that time, this bomb explosion was going on in Lagos. And we in DMI, we were mostly interested. In fact, we created a special unit which I call Special Operations Team. And that unit was created because of the way General Sabo frustrated me. I didn't know they were the people planting bomb. I was looking for those planting bomb and Colonel Frank Omeka, the unit that would do it, was not doing anything. So I had to create a special unit. I bought 15 motorcycles, bought walkie-talkie, spent so much money to be patrolling Lagos to get at those planting bombs. My Lord, little did I know that it was my people planting bomb. <laughs> now, Chief Ezego arranged with Colonel Maji Egbe to do this business for a fee. However, Colonel Maji Egbe is very close to General Sabo. And they were always connected, but even in the office, you can see, I'm sorry, my Lord, all these 419 people from a particular part of the country, you can always see them coming to see him, coming to see him, this 419, and then he was linking them up with Jina Sabo. I will prove that later. Now, why Jina Sabo was in war college? This Kone Majegbe was the person working for him. General Sabo said he came first in war college, he did well. Well, it is true. The main thing you do in war college is the major paper that is written. My Lord Kone Majegbe has a degree in English. He was an old teacher. It is Kone Majegbe that wrote General Sabo's paper from the first word to the last. My Lord, look at the paper. It's not hid, it's here. This is the paper with which General Sabo got a award in War College. Now, General Sabo, uh, Kone Majegbe wrote this paper. I can tell you, let him contest it. General Sabo did not cross a T in this paper. General Sabo did not dot an I on this paper. While he was in war college, Kone Majegbe was writing the paper in Lagos. And Warrant Officer Chukuma, who is the clerk to Kone Majegbe, who today is in the villa here. If you give the order now on the air, he will hear it in the evening and come here tomorrow. He is the one that typed everything. He will tell you that he never saw General Sabo's handwriting once. He typed it, completed it, binded it like this, and then it was carried to Abuja to Jina Sabo. In War College, aside from this major paper, you have assignments. In Benedict Jina Sabo is given assignment, he will phone. There is one very big intellectual in our place, Colonel Akiyemi. He will either phone me or phone Akiyemi directly. They ask us to do so. Yes, sir. We start writing. We start to start and send to him. That is how he came first in war college. My Lord. My Lord, we don't no. We should not. It's not part of our case. But I want to. I thought you stood My, up. Yes, sir. You are controlling him, not he controlling you. You want to attend any document? No, sir. Well? No, sir. Oh, my lord my lord just to conclude with this if you read his acknowledgement uh, I, uh, I am extremely grateful to Colonel J to Colonel JWT Bor, Dr. OBC Umolise, Colonel Major Igwe and Lieutenant Kenakin Yemi those were the two people who wrote all his papers and 
uh, give me, for reading through my scripts, no script, they wrote everything, <laughs> and giving me very useful suggestions which undoubtedly improved and enriched this project. Then he come to me. Yeah. My Lord, I will tell you, Yerasabo said people came to power to plunder, to steal money, to do this. Ah, my God. Yerasabo, as DMI, took all the money that was even given to me. It is on document. I'm not saying by mouth. 60, 65% of all the money that came to us went to Yerasabo while he was in war college. 1.5 million every quarter, plus 300,000 to his wife. I will show you. He now came to acknowledge that I am grateful to Colonel S. Ide Henry for the material and financial support in this project. <laughs> that is true. Now, I thought of Warren of Chukumba. He went on to now acknowledge the two people who did the work. Warren of Michael Chukuma again, together with Colonel Maju, whom he has called before. From the abundance of the heart, speaking, you know, you look, he said, Colonel Maju are the people that I will ever remain grateful for the typing, proofreading, and for the work. <laughs> My Lord, I brought this to show you that there was fraternity between Colonel Maju and Brigadier General Sabo. That was why when I left DMI, Colonel Sabo now organized. He has been given a BMW car. He has been given money. Colonel Majegwe now took the other party to General Sabo to also settle General Sabo. What did Ezego do? If you read a paragraph on the petition, it is said that Ezego's house is full of exotic cars. Ezego now organized money. I don't know how much, but I know money change hands. But the one we all saw, Ezego now gave General Sabo a state of the art Toyota Land Cruiser, American specification, the latest model. That was his own price. For that General Konemajegwe's connection, now that he's in trouble, Ezego has money. Even in trouble, he wanted to see by his way and deal with Unzeribe. The problem, my lord, was that Ezego is a 419. Some years later, the owners of the cars started looking for it in America. Somebody has stolen their car. Where is this Jeep? It is a Jeep worth $100 million. It cannot go like that. They use satellite. They use everything and trace that Jeep to General Sabo's house. <laughs> Sabo and the saga of stolen Jeep. I'm not the one that wrote it. And they are looking. My Lord, I seek to tender that, evidence, that document in evidence. <laughs> My Lord, this thing was carried by. By one by one, which one are you tendering? I attached the two. I attached the two. Which one are you tendering? Now they are the same thing now. Yes. Yeah. My lord, the one published by Tribune is the same thing. Mark that exit five. Yes. 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 There is uh, another one. The same story was carried by Tribune. And he says, Army General orders in soup over stolen jeeps. 
My Lord, we seek to tender that in evidence too. Do you have any other evidence to show? Exhibit 6? Yes, yes. In respect of the GP? Yes. I will just uh, highlight certain issues here. My Lord, if you read, read through what was published, this GP, you see, Colonel Maji Egbe is the person who wrote General Sabo's paper in War College. He now told Ezego, please give him a jeep. Say it is in appreciation of your excellent work in War College. So that is what was done. Now the jeep stolen in America were stolen in 1996. At least this particular Sabo's own. Now. It was given to Sabo definitely after war college. Because when the police arrested General Sabo, there were other three other people who were arrested at the same time. Each person said, Mine, I bought it at Susu Place. He took them there, then they continued in the police continued investigation. Each person that was arrested will take you to where he bought. Ah, I didn't know, I didn't know, look where I bought it. See how much I paid for it. When they got to Maogasabo, <laughs> he said to me, you know, one son is a man, dash me. Police say, dash. For what? He said, you know, for my excellent performance in war college. My Lord, you see the relationship. Kone Majegbe, who worked for him in war college. Ezego is now arrested. He told Ezego, give come, use this excuse that you are dashing him motto because of his excellent performance in war college. Because Kone Majegbe is the person who helped him in war college. So he now told police, it was given to me because of my excellent performance in war college. By who? Sonny Suleiman. Which address? 98... Uh, 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 of, of 98 Unambi Azikiwe Street, Balogun, Lagos. Number one, Balogun is a street. Unambi Azikiwe is a street. But let's just forget that yet. That's the, that's the information he gave them. They say very well. Let's go there and arrest Sonny Suleiman. Problem, my lord, is that they got there, there was no Sonny Suleiman. The best they could go was, okay, that person, he traveled, he traveled. My lord, till today, nobody has seen Sonny Suleiman. So, this was General Sabo. And now the police, of course, confiscated the car from him. And they are now planning to send it back to the rightful owners in America. Then General Sabo will come here and talk on the integrity of people. My Lord, more pathetic, he knew fully well that this car was stolen. When the everything I'm saying is here. And I'm telling you, my Lord, I have seen it. This is police A Interpol report. That is what they are quoting here. And I've marked it. You will have time to go through. I've marked all the area. You see, General Sabo, is, is it an exhibit yet? It is, yes, my Lord. Uh, exhibit what? Five. Exhibit five, sir. Five. You are quoting from exhibit five? Yes, sir. All right. And. Let me just read a, a part in, on page 11. Okay, let me start with the funny one. When they looked into the car with Sabo, Sabo said he was giving this car after war college. The car was stolen in America in, in February, in Genu January 1997. The year he finished war college. The custom papers found in this car that was used to clear it said the car was cleared in Nigeria in February 1996 before the car was even stolen. A car stolen in America in January 1997. That's when the owner said our car is stolen. Sabo's custom papers found in the car said the car was cleared in Nigeria in 1996. 
one year before the car was stolen even the custom papers were forged we are talking of integrity of a general my lord let me read on page page 11 just uh, a little bit down the the cookie had okay the toyota jeep with chassis number jt 73HU855AJO J0114138 impounded from Sabo was reported stolen from the US on January 13, 1997. Curiously enough, the custom and excise papers found in the vehicle show that the Jeep was shipped into Nigeria on February 8, 1996. That was almost a whole year before it was actually stolen in the United States. <coughs> then I go to the middle paragraph. The middle, pa the middle uh, paragraph. He said, Sabo was said to have claimed that the jeep in question was, I did not quote exactly what he wrote in his statement. Quote, was given to me as a gift by one Sonny Suleiman of 98, Sonny Suleiman is even funny name, of 98 Unandi Azikiwe Street, Balogun, Lagos. He said Suleiman gave him the car as a show of appreciation for his outstanding performance at the National War College. I continue on the next paragraph. What may, however, complicate Sabo's case is that the receipt of purchase he submitted to the police indicated that the vehicle was bought from a certain Jailal investment of no fixed address. You cannot trace the place. So, this is what Jina Sabo got in compensation for holding Nzerebe. Meanwhile, my lord, you must know something, we must correct an impression. Once you stand on General Sabo's way, he will tell so much lies against you, you will not even know what to say again. If your hands are not as clean as my own, that can come and stand and face him, my Lord, you cannot talk to him. General Bameyi is one of the general in Nigeria Army who checkmated General Sabo. He curtailed his excesses. And he will never ever forget Jinabami. While Chief Chuma Nzeribe was in detention, in the, sir, in the first place, I had a feeling, I've never talked to Chuma Nzeribe before, I had a feeling that he became aware that money was changing hands, vehicles were changing hands, and that the case in which I release him may turn to something else. He being another troublemaker, now wrote to the chief of defense intelligence to express his plight. Uh, I was detained, although I'm released, to see what is going on. Unfortunately for him, he was writing to a member of the killer group. Trouble upon trouble. They now send that same report to Jirasabu, one of the members. Somebody want to spoil your name. He said, is that so? Invite him. That is the beginning of Chuman Zeribe's problem. He now went for a charge. Meanwhile, Ezego has planned that if he cannot leave detention, at least the same Chuman Zeribe from detention, he can buy his way to bring him to where he is. Two of them will be there. Jinasabo, from the gift and largesse of Ezego, was already looking for a way to deal with Unzeribe. Therefore, Unzeribe now walked into their trap by writing petition against anybody he wrote against. They now invited him, now detained him, since they, that was what they were looking for before, detained him on 1st of September with the same Ezego. My Lord, I don't know the statement evidence he has given. But I know nobody talked to him while he was there. 
Nobody called him one day say, we arrest you for social purpose. Nobody talked to him. He would have died in that detention. The only saving grace was that God, in his infinite mercies, took General Abacha. And General Sabo's power crumbled. But meanwhile, while he was in detention, the rumor started going around that General Sabo's excesses is becoming too much to bear. The army, the army has fine officers. My lord, the army is good. The Nigeria army is one of the best army in this world. The problem is that few people, especially the killer group, hijacked everything and created fear everywhere. Nigeria army is good yesterday, is good today, it will be good tomorrow. It's one of the best army in the world. General Bameyi, in his frustration, concern, did what no other chief of army staff in Nigeria army has ever done. He decided to take a risk, to correct a bad situation. My lord, don't listen to the other allegations made against General Bameyi here. Most of them are not true. General Bameyi, because of his boldness, drove his car to security group on 30th March after Uzerbe has spent up to six months there. He brought out all the detainees in security group. Abba, what did this man do? What did this man do? When General Bameyi was leaving security group, he wrote something on the visitor's book. He wrote something on the visitor's book. My Lord, we seem to tender that document in evidence. Exhibit 7. Yes, my Lord, please. Please read this document to the Honorable Commission. My Lord, I read the document, Exhibit 7. Major General I. Arubamei, Chief of Army Staff. On visit to security group, there is the urgent need to release soldiers being held for minor offenses to their units for disciplinary action. Civilians being held for 419 and related cases should also be released to the appropriate organ, which is headed by a military personnel i.e. the Presidential Task Force on Trade Malpractices. The practice of detaining people for minor offenses must also stop. Only serious cases of national security should be, tra should be treated by the group, while as much as possible While as much as possible, civilians should be handed over to the Nigerian police unless there are national security issues involved. I hope by the time, by the next time I visit this place, things would have taken shape. Signed, Major General, 30th March 1980.
Colin, do you have any other document to show in this regard? Certainly. As the chief of army staff got to his office, because of the anger, consternation, his concern for the way people were being heard, including Chuma Nzeribe, he ordered the chief of administration, the officer in charge of discipline, to write a letter to General Sabo on what he has said. That, so that there was a follow-up the next day, all expressing concern for this illegal detention of civilians. Do you have any questions? Yes, my lord. My lord, I seek to tender this letter in evidence. Market exhibit eight. As my lord pleases. Connor, you can go ahead to read this. Please. My Lord, this is a letter from Headquarter Nigeria Army, dated 31st March 1998, the day, the day following the day the Chief of Army Staff visited security group where Chief Uzeribe was being detained. The heading is Unlawful Detention of Civilians in Military Facilities. One, I am directed to observe the arbitrary and unlawful detention of civilians in military detention facilities based on offenses that are either civil or capable of being handled by, by other appropriate, appropriate government agencies. It is also worrisome to observe that while such illegal arrests and unlawful detentions are carried out, the victims are deliberately incarcerated in the guise of endless investigations, pathetically. Serving officers and soldiers are also detained under these circumstances. It is in view of this irregularity that I am directed to instruct you to release, transfer, forthwith all civilians detained uh, detained cases in your custody to the appropriate civil authorities or government agencies for further investigation and prosecution. Similarly, cases involving serving officers, soldiers, should be promptly dispensed with to enable a court martial where necessary rather than perpetual incarceration. Military cells are meant for the confinement of military personnel where the need arises. For civilians, where the need arises for civilians to be detained in military cells in future, an express permission must be sought and obtained from these headquarters. I am also to state that these instructions must be given maximum compliance. Please. Treat and acknowledge receipt. E. Achibong, Major General for Chief of Army Staff. This letter was sent to Headquarter Nigeria Army Corps of Military Police and Headquarter Nigeria Army Intelligence Corps, that's to General Sabo. And copies were sent to all formations in Nigerian Army. My Lord, what I may not tender here, because I want to clarify everything, even what will come later. When General Sabo got this letter, because of his powers, because of his ability to do and undo, he now fired a letter to the chief of army staff, challenging him. Even you used to send detainees to us. We used to do this, all sorts of things. 
Well, I'm too junior to talk of indiscipline. I would have used that word, but I won't use it. Because, <laughs> but all, what, what it is that General Sabo wrote a letter and forwarded it as usual. The letter there? I don't want to tender it, but it's here. Why not? No. I choose not to mind. Okay. You can control me. I don't have I don't have it, sir. Confidence <laughs> You have to be careful. Look, sir, I, I actually brought it, but I, it will take me time to look for it. Okay, maybe I... Uh, leave that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, like you said, it has been turned out in an earlier case. Okay. What, what takes me this? Uh? That's what you said. <laughs> Did you say it's in evidence already? My lord, I don't have anything to say about that. The witness has said he cannot, he doesn't want to tender any letter. Have you got the letter? He and said it's in evidence. If you have the letter, show him. Lord, the letter is was tendered by Sabu in respect of the Have you case. got the letter? We don't have it here, no. What do you mean by you don't have it? It's tendered. It should Not be in respect of this case, my lord. It's in respect of DR case 696. Oh, let's, oh well, to help us tender the one you have. Please, Evidence uh, in witness, this case. If you have a copy of the letter you are referring to. Well, counsel, you said it's in, in what case? It's DR. All right, let's tender this so that it's neater. All right. Tell out the one you have. I have to look for it. I have to go to my car. It's not here now. Let him continue. My Lord, the witness has just said he does not have the letter with him. Let him continue. Please, Connery, continue with your evidence. My Lord, what I have tried to show is the difficulty the trauma everybody underwent in dealing with General Sabu, especially when it comes to detaining people. In spite of General Bami's effort, the issue here is not what has been done before. General Bami has come and said, we are having bad name just because of you. Release all these people. And you can now see that from that 30th, 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 31st May, when this letter was received. Chief Chuman Zeribe was not released. He was not interrogated. Nobody talked to him. Just because you have got a jeep, Chuman Zeribe must, except he can give you an aeroplane, he must be there. That's the system, my lord. That is why it was only on June 8, when General Abacha died, the power base of General Sabo crumbled. That is what saved Chief Chuma Zeribi. That's why he is here today. My Lord, he should be thankful to his God for June 8. However, I have nothing against or for anybody. Before I move on, I want to make a comment on the same Chief Chuma Zeribi. I believe he himself, I hate to use the word that he deserved what he got. He is also a troublemaker because he was involved in politics in Ihiala. He wrote peti false petition against Victor Okafo, Ezego, that led to Victor Okafo to be incarcerated in Abuja. Victor Okafo now retaliated, but it backfired. Instead of him to even thank his God and say, let Victor Okafo face the consequence, he started writing petition again. Unfortunately for him, he went to the hands of the wrong people. He was now rearrested. And my lord, I have some publication recently. I don't know him. But when I read one magazine called Insider, I started seeing his photograph and the story about him. His involvement with one Eze. Nebuliza. 
my lord the insider inside magazine of 27th august this year it has to do with nebo lisa who was dethroned in anambra state i read this publication and all the igwe was saying igwe was that it is chuma uzeribe no. let me tender it i will tender one my lord we see the magazine in evidence Insider Weekly. Exhibit nine. As my Lord pleases. Colonel, read the portion of uh, Please read the portion you intend to read to the hearing of this commission. Thank you. What page is that? Uh, you can mark the page. page. On, I want to start on page 25. 25? Yes. Well, that is the uh, exhibit really, page 25. Okay. In, in the middle of the last paragraph, when Chief Nebul. Nebuliza was asked who was behind his problems, who sent thugs after him. He said, some of the boys, okay, Nebuliza said that there was no basis for the Bakasi boys to invade his palace. And he quoted, some of the boys told me that they were sent by Umbadi Nuju and Chuma Unzeribe. I go to page 27. During an interview, he was asked on the left, right paragraph, did you specifically tell the Inspector General of Police that Governor Umbadinuju is indebted to you? Did you give him details of his indebtedness? And one of the things he said is, I mentioned Chuma Unzeribe, who is a criminal working with Umba Dinuju. I mentioned him specifically that he was trying to use Bakasi boys against me. And he went down again to say, I want, he said he was telling Governor Umba Dinuju, I want to tell you that all these rumors are meant to give a dog a bad name in order to hang it is Chuma Nzeribe again then on page 30 page 30 the second question on the left the Igwe was asked did anybody in Anambra state demand any amount from you he said that is Chuma Nzeribe how much did he demand from you 2 million I said it last year Chuma Nzeribe demanded 2 million from me he told me that big men in Anambra state have been giving him more than that and for me not to be embarrassed he needs the money why I just want to bring this out is even the Chuma Nzeribe himself is not a very clean person. I cannot justify this, but from my own investigation, he is involved in dubious things.
my lord i have told you earlier on that the hallmark of the killer group to which general sabo belong in fact now i'm going to talk specifically on general sabo is falsehood buck passing misinformation and disinformation all this has been sh shown and they exist in Chuma in Zeribe's case I ever, I ever want to draw you refer you to what happened in this commission on 19th July I happened to be here because that was the day my case was supposed to come up General Sabo came to this stand and said so many things that stunned every reasonable human being. We are all aware of what he said. He presented documents to show so many things. And on the 20th, I will come back to the 19th. On the 20th, while I was in my house at Benin, because on the 20th, I left for Benin since the commission did not hear our case that day. I had the commission's female lawyer ask question. I had one of the commission members ask question. I had General Bamiji's lawyer ask question. And all centered around one thing. You mean all this atrocity that was being committed in this country? You are not involved. You didn't play any role. You are a saint. He said no. General Bamey's lawyer went further to say, do you remember the 1995 coup? Do you remember there were publications that General Obasanjo was framed? He said yes. He asked him, are you aware that an officer, when there was no evidence to jail General Obasanjo, an officer was sent to Obasanjo's farm at Ota to make a picture, a description of the disposition of the farm. He said he was aware because I recorded everything down. He said that was why he now said there were loopholes in that investigation. Very good. He now asked him, where were you, were you not the one that sent the officer? He said, how could it have been me? When, as at that time, I was Commander 9 Brigade at Ikeja, I was not in DMI. So it could not have been me since I was not DMI. That was a very good reason. The problem, however, my Lord, is that, as usual, it's a lie. General Sabo was the DMI. On that issue, because this is just to buttress the point of falsehood, misinformation. It is what he told this commission, not what I told him to say. He, General Sabo was, now good, my lord, let me go a little bit back into history. General Sabo knows one Colonel A.B. Umaru. Umaru was fired during the Dimka school in 1996. That officer happened to marry from the same family as General Sabo. When that officer was fired, General Sabo, a lieutenant, virtually fainted when he saw it. And that was when he now vowed that one day he will pay those people in power. Who were those in power? General Obasanjo. General Yaradwa. He also found out that the DMI has power in the army. And he also vowed that day that one day he will get to that appointment of DMI. Now, in January 1995, one of the finest generals we ever had in this army, General Mukhtar, 
who was the director of military intelligence. When the arrest of suspect for 1995 coup started in February, by March, General Yaradua had been arrested, General Basanjo had been arrested. However, you will see in certain public, some of these things have been published, it's just that you need to be an insider to be able to piece them together. General Yaradua was not involved in any coup. But commissioned people were to provide evidence against them. I will take Yaradua's case because that is what set up. The, you will now see how General Sabu was appointed the EMI in the first place. General, those who gave evidence claim that they had a meeting on how to topple General Abacha in General Yaradua's house. They, and then, you know, in the Nigerian Intelligence Corps, I can assure you, we have credible officers. They don't take side. In fact, before he came, everybody knew that if you want justice, run to DMI. You cannot bribe anybody with 10 kobo. Because there's a system of, a system of auto cleansing. Colonel Wadike was the leader of the team that handled the interrogation of General Yaradwa. When they gave him all these stories, of course, he said, General Yaradwa, did you hold a meeting with these witnesses? Yaradwa said, no. I've never seen them all my life. Of course, he said, witness, did you hold me? He said, yes, we went to his house. General Wadike, a very clever officer. He said, no problem. Do you know Yaradwa's house? He said, yes, somewhere in Ikoyi. Take me there. Uh, no, 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 somebody took us there. Okay, you can't get there. Now took witness to the street where Yaradua lived at Ikoye. Now, this is the street Yaradua lived. Take me to Yaradua's house. The street is not very long. They walked from beginning to the end, came back. Witness could not identify Yaradua's house. Colonel Wadike, a very clever officer, brought the witness close to Yaradwa's house and said, when you entered Yaradwa's house, was there any prominent future? Was there anything that struck your face? A big statue? Uh, a television mask? Whatever. Is there anything that will strike you immediately you enter? He said, uh, nothing really. You mean as you are here, you cannot identify your adversaries? He said no. Kone Wadike now told him, turn your back. This is Yaradwa's house. On Yaradwa's house, there is a mast. This the satellite mast. By then, we didn't have this small, small mast. So Yaradwa being a big man, has a very big, more than 20 feet mast. You cannot miss it. Wadike now said, my friend. I don't think you attended a meeting here. <laughs> a blind man, we know that there is this big future here. General Mukhtar, being an officer of high integrity, started taking that position. Whoever plotted to implicate General Yaradwa started having fever. Is this man, is this general going to go like that? Whereas we want him out of circulation to facilitate self succession? No. They search his house, they find a submachine gun, which he has been carrying since 1976. Our okay. people came. Yes, this is illegal. You know, illegal possession of firearm. Knock it on him. If you think you can escape from this, you can't escape from this. But Konen Wandike has already raised. A serious problem. My Lord, things now started happening in quick succession. DMI cannot play the game that is required of him. They had a ready person who will play that game. General Mukhtar was immediately posted out of Nigerian Intelligence Corps. In order not to give any indication that he was being punished, he was told that he was being posted as chief of defense intelligence 
a higher appointment in the intelligence system. No problem. Very good. So he was happy. Except that when the posting came out, he was posted to an obscured office in DHQ. And General Sabo, with a mission, without any previous intelligence training, other than that spirit of vindictiveness, other than that attribute of ability to tell lies, was now brought in on 30th March 1995. It has never happened before that in the process of serious investigation, cool, you will change DMI. My Lord, that was the reason. Therefore, Sabo came to Nigeria Intelligence Corps with a mission. Mission statement. Jail of Basanjo, Jail of Yaradwa. And General Sabo, Sabo Connell by then was very good at that. Since all you required of him is to frame up somebody, he had no problem with that. He planned and told Abuja that, don't worry. I think they say Yaradwa, uh, uh, they didn't identify any prominent future. They will see prominent future next. He now organized, called one of his one of the members of his killer group. And this is where this killer group formation started. He now called one of the members, Colonel Olu, who was then CEO, security group. He said, look, Yaradwa is almost slipping through our fingers. That must not happen to Obasanjo. Send somebody to Otafam immediately. Let him go and bring back certain description which we shall give to Colonel Belo Fadile to say this is where he met Obasanjo, this is how the place was. General Sabo in his own hand wrote the requirement for information. My Lord, this is copy of General Sabo's instruction to jail Obasanjo. Exhibit 10. As my Lord pleases. Please give a copy of the letter. Connie, please read that letter to this commission. Yes, my Lord. And explain in detail because. My Lord, General Sabo called Colonel Olu. Explain the plan to Colonel Olu. And told him. One of the problems we had with Yaradwa was the witness, the planted witness, could not give a description of any prominent future. Send one of your best officers to Otafam. Let them go in disguise as civilian. Let them wear civil dress. Let them go under the pretext that they want to buy eggs. Nobody must identify them as soldiers. Colonel Olu gladly called an officer. Gave him 10,000 naira. Gave him a civilian vehicle. And I must be fair, the officer himself did not know what he was being sent to do. But being a very efficient officer, he, he was to accomplish the mission successfully. And Olu, aware of the implication of what he was doing, 
merely transferred General Sabo's instructions as it was written and given to him to the officer. And what General Sabo said was this Gona, Gona in Hausa, I think means farmer. I can go now. So, go now. He said, from, and he cancelled it. I don't know why. He said, Ota, Aru, left, Owode, farm. Then, two, from junction of Abe Okuta, Owode. Now, he started asking the questions. What is the estimated distance from the roundabout to the junction of the farm? Where, left or right, is the security gate? Is the road tarred or untarred? Are there flowers hanging up, hanging out up or down? Where is the position of the office in the farm, left or right? Where is the position of the hotel in the farm building? Is the main building upstairs or bungalow? Now, for the last one, my Lord, remember General Yaradwa. He now said, what are prominent futures, statutes, etc.? This has failed them in Yaradwa. It must not fail here again. So, you see, that one, what are prominent futures, statues, etc.? He can confirm his writing. Okay. Then, tomorrow. Okay. 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 You are reading that is a handwritten uh, letter. Are you very conversant with General, Brigadier General Ibrahim Sabu's handwriting? Because I, anybody can as well write something. I worked with him from 1996 until the time he went to war college and came back. I know his handwriting day or night. And besides, this one, he's here, he can tell you if he's writing or not. He's not in Hiti, he's here. <laughs> My Lord, this information... You know, what what the council is asking, what you read, is it in his handwriting? Yes. You haven't answered it. You said it is. Yes, it is. My Lord, I think there's need to clarify it because the, what I have is written on letterheaded paper of Access Bank, but all that notwithstanding, I thought that your counsel would have either found us there are Sabo's handwriting to confirm or whatever, so that you just just to be on the you know just to confirm. Sovereign. Pardon. Is Access Bank Sylvania? No, I'm just saying, since you raised the question, you didn't seem to have established. Okay. I actually ask that you should tell this Honorable Commission, Yes. I mean, whether you are actually conversant with his handwriting. Because anybody can as well write anything and then you mistake it. I am very conversant with his handwriting. You can continue for now. My lord, this officer went to the farm under pretext that he was going to buy eggs, did all the surveillance, took all the description he could get, but he was not able to get to some places like offices, etc. And this was what was now given to the reply, was what was now given to Konebelo Fadile that when General Mukta was DMI. General Konebelo Fadile was not actually tortured. But when General Sabo became DMI, Konebelo Fadile was now tortured and made to study this, the response to this, which he now used to nail General Obasanjo. That is why, my lord, he probably thought that nobody can do General Obasanjo anything. Therefore, if he Tied himself to General Obasanjo. If Obasanjo, General Obasanjo got reprieve, he will get reprieve. Unfortunately, General Obasanjo did not get reprieve. He himself did not get reprieve. And by the time he saw that he was only a Judas, he now wrote a letter to General Obasanjo. I am sorry. They made me tell lie against you. 
this is the origin of that lie. But when General Sabo came here, he rushed to give General Basan your cassette. General Bama, he wanted you dead. General Baka wanted you dead. Everybody wanted you dead. Forgetting that, which one come first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Who started the whole thing? It was General Sabo. He's here. And I want a situation where he should comment on everything I've said Well, I'm here. It's, thank God he was the one that said they should call me <laughs> on the 3rd of July. He said, call Connie J. Henry. He's the one that did everything. That was the, day, the happiest day in my life. I now have opportunity on his invitation to tell the truth to this commission and the whole world. My Lord, that is for misinformation, disinformation about the 1995 coup. My Lord, Somewhere down the line, I said when Jina Sabo wrote the report on Chief Chuma Nzeribe, he now decided to indict me that I was one of it. That is curious. Why will he want to do that? I think I need to give you a little bit of explanation. Where me and Jina Sabo fell apart. When he was going to war college, in our corps, in DMI, there were two officers who were senior to me. By then, I was a lieutenant colonel. But everybody would testify that. Sometimes I go to the office in the morning. I go back home the next day. I don't leave office. I continue working and working for the corps. And I think he saw that attribute. Most of the things we were writing was making him gain prestige because we were writing what I consider as solid intelligence report that did not seek to create problem for anybody but for the interest of this nation. But General Sabo has peculiar interest for money. Already he was interested in the money coming to, the, to DMI. If he put anybody there who can challenge him, he will not get cover. Suddenly, before he left, he now posted the person senior to me away, sent one to Chad, so I was now the next senior person. He now made me, he did it to make me DMI. And I may just read one thing before I even get there. When he was going, I will not even read, I will read it later. He said, while he was in war college, any money we get, I should be giving it to him. For me, he knows I have never demanded for Kobo throughout my tenure with him. So he could rest. For me, if you like, I have always believed that most offices in Nigeria, if you judiciously use 25% of the money we get, Nigeria will be a better place. So I had no problem with giving him 60% of all the money we got and still performing as I wanted. But he now wanted me to be involved also in, in humanity of man to man. That is where we parted. Me, I will never do anything against my conscience. What my conscience tells me, I will do. If you arrest somebody and I find that that person is arrested unjustly, I will release him. If there is no need to arrest somebody, you cannot force me to arrest that person. I will just go through, I will, I will jump the gun by saying, when he and his killer group found out that I was spoiling work for them, they didn't know what to do again. They now wrote a petition against me. That petition is the most useless petition, the most pathetic thing that a general can ever put his hand. In fact, it's a disgrace. That's why I separated the killer group from Nigerian armed forces. They are different people. My Lord, I have the petition.
It was written, oh, no, I don't want to tender it here. I want to explain it. It was written on 14th May, 1997. I was made DMI on 2nd September, 1996. Immediately I became DMI, General Sabo from War College never allowed me to rest one day. I think this man is trying to is a subversive, arrest him. This one. So they were always sending us reports. Well, I think we better tender it so that I can explain it. My Lord, I seek to tender that letter. In 11. As my Lord pleases. Please read that for the portion you would like to read to the commission. My Lord, this petition written against me had very serious allegations. When General Sabo found out that I was not doing his bidding, the killer group now met General Sabo, Konelulu, Colonel Omenka and Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa. They now said, what can we do to deal with this officer? Each one of them now brought points of what they know. They wrote it on 14th May. It was supposed to go to Chief of Army Staff. But they didn't give Chief of Army Staff a copy. Instead, they took it to the head of state, General Lassani Abacha wanting him to take a decision that I am a security risk for him to detain me and jail me. Unfortunately for them, others who have seen me perform during my tenure as DMI for that period, we are going to tell the head of state that for the first time, we have now got a DMI who does not show interest in politics. They were saying good things about me. So each time General Sabo and Co. go to the head of state, he will tell them, don't worry. He will always disappoint them. My Lord, this thing started immediately I became DMI. And I just want to read what they wrote against me. You will see where I try to protect violation of human beings, their rights, and how Sabo, what he was fighting me against. By then, it was terrible for me because I was in soup. But today, I will happily bring it out because the very essence of this commission is human rights violation. I will tell you that in the army, there were officers with conscience who were fighting the system from within. It's just that the system was too much for us. My Lord, I will read, observe activities of the acting DMI, Colonel S. Ide Henry. I wish this is the, I wish to bring to your attention some disturbingly observed loopholes within the military security setup as a result of series of reported commission and or omissions apparently on the part of the acting DMI, Colonel S. Ide Henry. Some of the reports are detailed in the following subparagraphs. A. Coup report. One chief OB, so I will just, let me just explain it to you. This school report in Aqua Ibom State, the military administrator established tax force on fake drugs. And Major Ekbo and Dr. Yubi, a character that were mentioned here, were members of that tax force. In the process, they closed down some chemists. One of those aggrieved parties who knew that the security system we had in this country cherished anything once if you want to in, hold, if you want to deal with anybody just say this person wants to overthrow abasha that is the end of that person so those who understand understood the system took advantage of it and intelligence officers like general sabo used that to get along in the villa 
always going to Jirambasha. Somebody wants to throw, overthrow you in uh, Akwa Ibom State. This man wants to overthrow you. Everybody wants to overthrow Abasha. That he was now made a prisoner in the villa. He could not go out again. This was a case like that. They now wrote a petition and sent to Mustafa in, a, in the villa here. Mustafa sent this petition to me through the CDI, Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa. I got it. I sent Kone Frank Kumenka and other officers. I said, Ah, you want to overthrow my organization? No way. Go and arrest those people. We got there, looked into the matter. I wrote to the administrator of Cross River State. I wrote to the administrator of Aqua Ibon State that we are investigating something. Assist. But when we looked into the case, we found out that it was just a matter of vendetta. Once I am convinced, I cannot arrest, I cannot disturb an officer, Major Epo by then, whom I do not know till today, who never knew me, was in Bakasi, fighting to protect the territorial integrity of this nation. You now want me for frivolous report to bring him to my to Lagos here. Yeah? You are trying to overthrow Abasha. Fuck that person. He's not trying to overthrow Abasha. We cannot do things like that. So I said, don't even call him to Lagos. Leave him. Once I am convinced that this is just fake petition, let it be like that. But when they were looking for allegations against me, they now said. They gave me 250,000 for that investigation. And I will read that. Based on this, the sum of 250,000 naira was approved for the investigation. But from report reaching us, the acting DMI released only 25,000 naira for the exercise. And a further 25,000 naira when the investigating team arrived back from Calabar. The lack of release of approved resources tended to have stalled investigation, and up to this moment, the whole truth of the case is yet to be known. My Lord, this case had board of inquiry. I was subjected to board of inquiry. They looked into everything. The head of the board of inquiry is Cornell Akintonde, former administrator of uh, Ogun State. They have two other members. They are all still serving, except Kony Akinton. They looked into the five allegations made here, and I wrote my response in writing. They could not find anything against me. I think you tender the response he has written to that petition. The evidence. Mark Bartek, exhibit 12. As my Lord pleases. Colonel, please. You can read the portion you intend to. Okay. I will continue with the petition they wrote against me. Yes. When they investigated for so long and I tendered this response, they could not find anything. There are four other allegations which I will get to. But I want to finish with this one. They now... General Sabo now ordered them to go back and do more after they've concluded the investigation. They now went to DIA and collected a letter where I made a request for 250000 Because I told them, nobody gave me 250000 They now went to collect a letter where I actually requested for 250000 They gave them, it was Konolu that gave them. So they now came and said, eh, see, is it not you that requested for this money? I looked at it and shook my head. I said, what is wrong with you people? This request was made in August. And I explained to them, you know, General Sabo is always having imaginary threats all over the country. That was one of the imaginary threats. He now wrote to them to give him money to go and investigate a case in Kaduna. 
as a staff officer under him, he asked me to write a request for 250,000. By that, I didn't even know what they were going to use it for. And the CDI, one of his colleagues in this killer group, now approved that 250,000 and another 500,000 for Sabo. It is there. So I now show them, don't you see that I signed for General Sabo DMI? How can I DMI now sign for another DMI? Then they were ashamed. That now became the end of this matter. They could not go forward or back. But my Lord, I will give you two more examples. The second one, they say there is a foreign country, I should go and look for Nadeko, kill Nadeko. I say, me, what problem do I have with Nadeko? They wrote it against me. You can read it there, sir. It's a bit sensitive, I don't want to read it out. But they say, go and we kill Nadeko, the whole Nadeko. I refuse. They say the same allegation. Now, of course, this one, they say, I sell car, that I'm a businessman. I say, okay, very good. Show me the type of business I'm doing. My Lord, the last two are very interesting. They say black matrix. He said, the, I blackmailed the Minister of Petroleum Resources to give me money. I said, very good. My Lord, what happened was, in 1997, when there was fuel scarcity in Nigeria, each time General Basha ordered fuel to be imported, within two days, fuel will come to Nigeria. <laughs> ha! I now got information that the Honorable Minister withdrew $500,000 in New York at a time after which, within that period again, fuel came. During a security mission, I now say, look, are we sure that we are not being played in this country? What did the minister withdraw 500000 for? That within that period, they now say fuel should come. It takes a minimum one week to order fuel. But it's as if the fuel were waiting in, the, in our waters here. Each time the labor say, okay, order fuel. The next day, fuel will fall everywhere. And that is the, the bad fuel we are getting. When I raise that, because they all get patronage from that ministry, they now went to say, I said the minister, I threatened him. And eventually, my lord, many months later, this petition was now, General Basha now directed that this petition should be taken to General Bamey, chief of army staff. General Bamey has the quality. He does not wait for long story. Because in this petition, they said Dr. Mike Adenuga was there when I threatened the minister. You know, as General Air Vice Marshal Musa gave General Bami this petition, he called Dr. Mike Adenuga immediately. Within 10 minutes, he was there. Hey, Mike, they say Colonel Idehere was threatening the minister to give him money. That was saying, eh. I said, what are you saying, eh, for? Were you not the one who was threatening him? He said, me. What are you talking about? I know Colonel Idehere, but I've not seen him for a long time. Jinaba may now turn to Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa, who signed this petition, the leader of the killer group, and said, See the petition you have written. See your witness. My Lord, there are many witnesses to prove what I'm going to say. Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa, a two star general, now said, But I told you before that I did not even read this thing. Sabo Anko brought it to me and I signed it. My Lord, General Bamey is here. And I know that General Idi Musa used to appear here. And I know even among the night of night officers, they heard of the story when he was making round what I'm saying now. You can we have many of them here, they can testify. It is a General Sabo that prepared this thing just to create problem. So oh and I'm just using this as an example. You will see the numerous publication they wrote. He told you the other day, General Basha said they should write again, General Bamey. He, he's lying. That is the way they survive, my lord. Ha! Ah. Nigeria. <laughs> my lord, this is a pathetic one and directly related to Chief Chuman Zeribe's case. Why, General Sabu? He said, Mr. Sada Ilo. Mr. Sada Ilo is the director in SSS. General Sabo and DGNI and other security chiefs were getting on well. 
he did not like director of SSS and he was planning to go to that position so they were doing everything to discredit SSS immediately he got to war college he sent me a report that Sada Ilo is trying to destabilize the nation I said destabilize Nigeria that's what I'm here for I will arrest him I arrested him why are you trying to destabilize my nation I detained him I now say but I went to him tell me your side of the story he now told me everything it was just problem created by Sabo to implicate SSS so that the head of state will see that SSS is against him remove the head and replace him with him he is the one that sent me the report and he claimed it was from the presidency he sent it to me himself and NIA they plotted it he sent me two reports one was to arrest Mr. Sada Ilo. the other one was to arrest Alaji Maitambari who is presently the Parmasek SS Special Security Office SSO now because that one his own case is with uh, Alaji Dasuki it's a complex thing my lord it, uh, something that happened many years ago that had no merit when I talked to Sadailo and found out what he was scheming I asked Frank on a Frank Kumeka who was holding him release this man to go he didn't do anything let's not put hand in other people's fights Frank being in league with Jinasabo refused to release him I told him the next day release this man he said we cannot do that because it's Abuja he said I'm just coming to take over I don't know the system then one day my lord I have to explain in the evening at 8 o'clock I prayed to God I will not put hand in the unjust arrest of any human being on my own I drove to where Sadailo is being arrested because if I give instruction nobody will obey it they will tell Frank he will tell Sabo and nothing can be done I now did not talk to Frank for two days on the third day I went there myself at night when I know that Frank is not easily available or Menka I called Sadailo I said pack your things get ready do you he has cellular phone as phone I said do you have anybody you can reach to come and carry you he said yes yeah, if he has a house in Lagos I said call them because if I give instruction and leave in fact they will not take him to another detention center I stayed until he was released entered his vehicle and went and I stayed back so that nobody would make a phone call as he was going I drove away my lord before I got home Jinasabo had called me you have released him what? I said, no, of course I said a line no no I asked him to go and bring document to prove his case he said don't you know it's the presidency that said we should add look at what they wrote when they now wanted to accuse me before the presidency an investigation was ordered into the activities of one Mr. Sada Ilo a former director of operation department of state security state services on issues bordering on national security the investigation was carried out at the instance of the presidency here again is one of those falsehood the attribute while investigations were being conducted the acting dmi reportedly ordered the release of the suspect my lord you see a repeat okay of chief chuman's very best case by the time the suspect had to be rearrested my lord you can now see i, I will release sabo will rearrest it's what happened to chief Shuma on Zeribe. it's what happened to director of sss said i look by the time the suspect had to be rearrested based on the fact that the investigation were then inconclusive incalculable harm had been done to the case my lord there was no case so this were the intrigue I was subjected to while acting as DMI. Fire from all over. I cannot tell you all what I went through, my Lord. But as a man of conscience, I took certain risk for this nation. I'm not talking. 
My Tambari is still there working now. He's in the presidency. This Sadailo is still in the SSS. And I'm happy for them. Because what the essence of this commission is to look into human rights violation. I was one of those who fought against the violation of human rights. The most misunderstood general in the Nigerian army, I believe, is General Ishai Abamey. I will go to General Abamey and explain to him that these things are not right. He always gave me support. No other person could dare challenge General Sabu. No other person could say anything. My Lord, I have actually explained to you what was contained in my response. You will read the details there. But I want to take you to my conclusion. What is happening today? I have warned some of these generals. General Bamey is suffering today. Falsehood of General Sabu. General Abubaka is being rubbished. Falsehood of General Sabu. I warn them that they should be careful with generals like General Sabu. My Lord, I will read my response. That's exhibit 11. Yes, sir. I will, I will go, before I get to no, my response. Exhibit 12. Yes, exhibit 12. I will go to paragraph 19 of my response. Paragraph 19. And on the last sentence of paragraph 19, I said, it is desirable for us to continue with our efforts and not to be discouraged by the intrigues of our detractors who put personal interest well before our collective security interest. I went further to paragraph 20 in my assessment to say, now that this perfect intelligence coup has been executed, an objective achieved. That is, General Sabo and Co have written this against me. They've achieved what they want to achieve. I now said, it is desirable to reflect on the type of intelligence we hope to get from senior intelligence officers who are ever ready to tell lies and misinform their superiors to achieve personal goals. The golden attribute of an intelligence officer is honesty, courage, to own up to the truth. This was done in 97. Nobody knew that this commission will ever come. Nobody knew that tomorrow will ever come. And my Lord, this is where I have no pity for, well, I won't say General Bamey, but certainly General Abubakar. Because I warned them in my last paragraph, I said, paragraph 22, the last sentence, I am, however, worried for a system that condones intelligence officers who tell lies and misinform decision makers or superior authorities for personal interest. My Lord, listen. I fear that if we do not stem the tide of misinformation now, it will be the turn of our superiors to suffer tomorrow. My Lord, tomorrow has come. No clapping. No clapping. It's written there. My Lord, this was written by me in microphone. My Lord, this was written by me on 29 September 1997. And it was the first person I gave was Brigadier General Sabu. He was the first person I gave. I sent a copy to General Bamey. I sent a copy to General Abdul Salami Abubakar at CDS. That is why if you look at the distribution, it was 
for action that the person to take action was DMI, who is General Sabu, first person to get it. Then for information, those people I was talking to, that if you do not stem the tide today, you will suffer tomorrow. CDS, that's Chief of Defense Staff, General Abdusalami Abubakar. Today, the tomorrow has come. And Chief of Army Staff, General Bami, General Bami, he tried, but the tomorrow has still come. It's part of his effort. I also sent a copy to General Abacha through Major Mustafa. My Lord, I don't know how to put it. There is hardly any officer at that time who could do this. Who will look people in their face and tell them the truth. What we are doing is not good. We are telling lies. Intelligence is not lie. Intelligence is truth. Thank God, even in the midst of persecution, I documented it. And when those who investigate, this was what I now submitted when this case was being investigated. Before I get there, they signed this thing on the 14th. Jinaba may who it was meant to go to. They didn't give him. General Sabu and Air Vice Mashahidi Musa took it straight to General Abacha. See what Colonel De Henry is doing. He wants to spoil our security system. General Abacha, who already knew what they were doing, now said, okay, don't do anything. This report was sent to General Bahame, Chief of Army Staff. Go and give him, let us see what he will do. Then they were stuck. By that time, he was in war college. He was doing all these atrocities. Instead of facing his book, because we were writing his papers for him. <laughs> My Lord, when General Abasha damned them, they didn't know what to do again. Until Jan Sabo came back from war college, took over as DMI. And now went back to General Abasha with him and said that the petition we brought last time, nothing has been done. General Abasha is very clever, my lord. He said, but I told you to give it to you, Chief of Army Staff. Have you not given him? That was where Advice Mashaidi Musa now said, eh, yes, it's my fault. I have not given him. And I said, go and give him. This thing was written May, June, July, August. It was in September. They now sent a copy because they didn't know what to do again to General Abame. That was where General Bahame now called Dr. Adenuga and found out that it was all lies. And he now sent this petition to General Sabo to investigate. Everybody knew that he was the one that wrote it. You remember he wrote a petition against General Bahame? He will write petition against you and pretend as if he does not know. It's his work, trade is stuck in trade. Uh, look, they gave him to investigate. He had it for about two months, uh, no, about three weeks. Then he now called me one day. Uh, he says, you know, um, those useless people, they just wrote one kind of petition against you. I don't know why. Uh, but I think we just, what we just do is just write your response. Just write it. Give them. Let's forget everything. Not knowing that I knew from beginning that he was the one that wrote it. So, when I was writing my response, because I knew that he was the one that wrote it, my Lord, from page one to six, I now explained my own side of the story page one to five i i took all the allegation made against me explained everything i now went to say what i know of what he plans to do i now said wrong impression impressions on finances my lord that is very interesting General Sabo told this commission that General Abubakar came to power with the insatiable urge uh, to plunder this nation, etc., etc. But when General Sabo was going to war college, because I was a staff officer, I was the one that wrote the handing over note because I did not know who would be DMI. So it was somewhere down the line, he now called me and said, I should put my name that I am the DMI. The only contribution he made is what I quoted here. And I will read it to you on page 7. He said, that is the only thing he wrote. As you are aware, 
the responsibilities of DMI are enormous and finances are very exiguous. Please use the scarce funds available to HQ Knight prudently and in consultation with me. That's him. As the need arises, exists for me to still maintain and fund my sources even while on course. Here is the general that told you he was on course. He didn't know what was happening there. Now, how, why, what happened with this? I will read further. I kept faith with this arrangement and made available to DMI between 1.2 and 1.5 million every quarter. The last time I took such money to the DMI was in May 1997 when I made available the sum of 1.5 million. In addition, I made available the sum of 100,000 to DMI's wife monthly for household expenses. The last time I paid such money was also in May 97. Aside from this, I made available the sum of 500,000 to DMI in October 96 and later $2,000 to Madam. My Lord, the money we get was between 2.5 and 3 million. The month we get 2.5, that the quarter we get 2.5, General Saba will take 1.5 million. His wife will take 300,000, making 1.8 million. My Lord, how much is left for me to run the call? 700,000. And I did well. Because as far as I'm concerned, money cannot be a problem to me. The only problem I have is if you ask me to do what is not right, there we shall fight. In addition to this, when I took over, somebody came to me from NMPC and said, have you got your LPO? I said, which one is LPO again? He yeah, you said your normal LPO that is given to you every month. They said they've sent it. I said, ah, you mean I will be getting LPO? Praise God. I have not got it. Two days, three days later, they now came back to tell me, say, okay, sorry, there's a mistake. The LPO is taken to Abuja. It's the other DMI they are talking of. Which means, Jiran Sapo gets LPO. You say I'm doing business every month from NMPC. That's how I knew. Jinasabu has talked so many things about Marabu. These Muslim malams who pray for people who kill cow, who bury anything. My Lord, I hope Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa is here. He is the CDI. And he told me with his mouth. When Jinasabu was to go to war college, he went to Jinalabacha. The NSA, Alaji Ismail Aguazo, also told me of some of the things I'm going to say now. Dinasabo went to the head of state and said, you know, I just put somebody there. No, the first one. Every quarter, Dinasabo... Hmm? Okay. Every quarter, my lord, during Abasha's tenure, General Sabo gets 2 million naira for Marabu. 2 million. When he was going to war college, he went to the head of state and said that 2 million, even while he's in war college, they should continue paying it to him because he's going to continue with the malams. The head of state obliged, but told Elvis Mashahidi Musa that he should be giving him only one million instead of two. But according to Elvis Mashahidi Musa, he continued giving him two million. That was the first request and granted. The second request, my lord, was that this 2.5 million or 3 million we used to get, he said that he does not trust how they will be using that money while he's away. The money should be paid to him then he will now disburse it to us. That was where General Bacha said, Habba, Sabu. 
the man you put there, you don't want him to do anything at all. That was how he lost that. Having lost that, he now came and inserted this in the handing over note that I must be giving him money. If as at that time I knew that the head of state had damned him, maybe I would not be giving him those monies. But I didn't know. Thank God I didn't know. So, my Lord, when Jinasabu came here and talked of people who patronized marabouts, who patronized malam, killing ram and everything, it's just a wonderful thing. He has allocation. If they deny, my Lord, it's very simple to know. The payment voucher in DIA, thank God none of them is there again. They will show you quarterly, two million, just for Marabu. And <clears throat> you know, General Sabo was in Kotonu. That was where he learned the trick of this marabu. Marabu, what they normally do for, to you, or what Jinasabu was doing to Jinalabasha, they get in touch with most people working close to Jinalabasha. If Jinalabasha is going anywhere, anything he wants to do, they will tell them, oh, guy is going to some place tomorrow. We are ironing white dress for him. He will fall. Suddenly, ah, one man just told me, they say, if a guy is going anywhere tomorrow and he's going to wear white dress, he should not go. The man will say, yes, but that's what I was going to do. My Lord, this marabou system, this, he discussed it with me. He told me himself. But he didn't tell me he was the one doing it. So, my Lord, there are too many things to say about Jinan Sabu. It all goes to buttress the point that Chuma Nzeribe suffered because he fell into the trap of the killer group. Again, on the 19th, my Lord, General Sabo came here and presented certain documents to a trained intelligence officer. But he should have learned something. I did not see what he presented to you. So, I, all I know, because I was here, he said, record, 5,000 record for $14.5 million. In fact, that day, my ear, yeah, I said, my God, could it be? He said, ah, this General Abdusalam must be a uh, Hawa. Yeah, then they repaired the uh, uh, Alpha Jet that was supposed to be repaired for 66 million Dutch mark. They now inflated it to 44 million dollars. My Lord, since those documents were given to you, it is assumed that the document was given to a respectable commission. It cannot get to any other person's hand. Otherwise, those are highly classified documents. They are top secret documents that this direct that impinges directly on our national security. So, giving them to you, no problem. However, my lord, as I read Tribune on 22nd July, I read documents that made Abu Bakr. This drew my curiosity. I've heard of it. I've not seen it. Let me look at it. I turned to page 5. Huh? It's true. I turned to page 9. Say, my God, it's true. I turned to other pages. Everything was there. I said, this people must have ruined this country. Then I took a closer look at the document, knowing fully well who my ogre is. My Lord, even to a private soldier in intelligence corps, you will see the trick immediately. I have made photocopies. Let me explain. Publication in the newspaper, in evidence.
sir. What is the two documents? One is a newspaper. Yes, it's photocopy. Tribune. Which are you trading? This or that? I see. Are you trading both as one, or one by one? That's uh, what is Tribune of. Uh, Elizabeth 13. As my Lord pleases. Kone, you cannot make reference to the document as you wish. Thank you, my Lord. <coughs> my Lord, on the first big sheet, I just want to draw attention to the 5,000 recruits General Sabo said was bought for $14,500. My Lord, what was said in this document is that different companies were awarded contracts to supply different equipment or a combination of different equipment. And Euro, no, sorry, and St. Irene International Limited was to supply the following. One, one rescue boat and 5,000 raincoats at $14 million what General Sabo did in his usual mischief was to cover rescue boat and said 5,000 raincoats were bought for 14.5 million. The, all over the military, everybody started doing calculation. That brings it to $2,900. Uh, $2, That's about 300,000 for one raincoat. Ah, this General Sabo worker must be a thief. This will, but my Lord, it's not true. What, this is a document he sent to Tribune. What he said was rescue boat. If he read well, he will see when, where they went further to explain rescue boat and raincoat. Rescue boat, in paragraph D, said the rescue boat will be employed for search and rescue and also for casualty evacuation and general logistic support. My Lord, any professional soldier will understand what rescue boat is. Rescue is not, is not a Red Cross going to give people food when they are sick. In a battle condition, in a hostile condition, your soldiers are surrounded. They cannot do anything again. You have to fight your way, which means this rescue boat must have firepower ability, must be able to engage the enemy, suppress the enemy fire, and get other smaller craft either underwater or on surface water to move into the area and rescue your men while the firepower of the gun is suppressing the head of the enemy. If Jira Saba was doing his work and not going to Abuja every day, he will know. So, and I know what informed this. You remember my lord, they were saying they were talking of exchange of prisoners between Nigeria and Cameroon. I don't want to go into too much details. It is the lessons the Nigeria army learned from their operation. The need for a rescue boat now became paramount. The only problem the Nassau took advantage of now is that St. Irene that was to supply this rescue boat was also to supply the raincoat. And the Nassau told the whole world that this raincoat was 14 million. This is what I call disinformation because he knows the truth. And if we are able to go further, does he know the type of record we are talking about? 
Read what is in sub paragraph C. They, they put all together. Protective suit, raincoats, and life jackets. The protective suits, raincoats, and life jacket will serve the troops as essential life-saving equipment and protective clothing against possible radiation fallout from electronic emissions and biological and chemical agents in a modern conflict area such as the Niger Delta. Are we talking of 20 naira raincoat in the market? But my Lord, we should say things the way they are. And I thank God I have come here to clarify these things so that people of integrity will not be maligned for nothing through disinformation. The mere fact that is misleading this commission is enough offense. Because he knows that what he's saying is not true. My Lord, the more pathetic one, let us go to the next page, the last page I photocopied. This is terribly pathetic. He said 44 million plus was used to service aircraft that General Bashar had earlier agreed to service for 66 million Dutch mark, which came to about 20 something million dollars. Fair enough. But the, do, did he think that these commission members will not read the documents that was given to them? Will this commission not read the document from B? Will they just take the money and say, crucify General Abubakar? Will the commission not be, I mean, what do you take the commission to be? It's an insult on the integrity of the commission to make such insinuation. Because, my lord, it is very clear. The memo to the head of state was very clear from beginning. And I will read. The need for Nigeria efforts to maintain an appreciable area firepower that will provide support for our service forces in times of hostility has never been in doubt. The Alpha Jets aircraft is the only the Alpha Jet is the only aircraft that can be used to provide this support. Now we get to the crux of the matter. There are certain number 17 Alpha Jets in the Nigeria Air Force inventory. All of them become due for program depot maintenance (PDM) on or before 1996. However, due to its operational exigencies, the Nigeria Air Force, in concert with the Air Force aircraft manufacturers vendor, decided on a program, Aircraft Service Life Extension, which is called ASLEP, for the aircraft with a view to determining if the time between PDM on the aircraft could be extended. My Lord, I just want to explain that. To service an aircraft, is a very, very expensive business. Not to talk of specialized aircraft like an Alpha Jet, that you cannot get any part of the shelf. You must go to the manufacturers and they don't make it and keep, they must manufacture it for you. You cannot do otherwise. Nigeria Airways has no air aircraft today. <clears throat> now, the aircraft we do for PDM, PDM is the maintenance you do like overhaul every 10 years. You must do it. Otherwise, you cannot fly the aircraft. During General Bashar's time, they went for what we call Pash Pash. Is there anything that can be done to just put small, small maintenance on this aircraft so that it can fly? Let these boys leave me. That's why they now went for ASLEP to extend that life of 10 years maintenance to 13 years maintenance. Is there anything they can do to add small life to the aircraft? And you know, what you are doing is that you are extending the problem. If you do it like that and you use it, you damage more things because you didn't want to spend the money. Instead, you were told how money was being sent outside. I continue. After a successful ASLEP, the Nigeria Air Force and the vendor agreed that with special maintenance, the time between PDM on some of the aircraft could be extended from 10 years to 13 years. So they want to add three years. As a result of this, the former C in C authorized the repair of six of the aircraft for use in Operation Sandstorm. What they have told us is the former C in C did not want to bring money to do a comprehensive repair on 17. He said, take only six, half a squadron, and let's do small pash pash. 
then you boys can go and fight. If you like, kill yourself, it's your business. Now, on the third paragraph, he said, although the Nigerian force was able to reactivate six Alpha jets, all the aircraft for due for PDM next year, that is, even that three years has now come and gone. So, we have done more damage. There is need to repair those aircraft now at a more cost. Furthermore, the, the ejection seats and canopies will also be due for overhaul within the year. General Sabo left here on the 20th. Called his friend in Tribune newspaper. You see that thing I used to destroy in Abu Sabo. I will send it to you now. General Sabo faxed this document. Nobody told me. I only look at the first document and I saw the way God will catch them. His fax number was there. My Lord, look at this first one. He said the top from Brigadier General I. A. Sabo retired. Phone number 09 314840. 20, July 20, 2001. Four minutes past four. That is to say, immediately General Sabo left here after telling you some more stories on the 20th. He went home, immediately faxed these documents to the newspaper. The problem, my lord, is this newspaper is published in internet. Alpha Jet is the highest defense secret we have in Nigeria. Effectively, what General Sabo has done, he has put to the whole world the state of our aircraft, the state of our defense situation. He has compromised the security of this nation. My Lord, I wonder why General Sabo has not been arrested. Because you will read frequently any intelligence officers that is involved in giving out top secret information must be arrested and detained and investigated and tried and jailed. But he's staying here because nobody is talking. He can come, tell lies upon lies, increase it every day and talk, 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 lies upon lies because nobody is doing anything. Why is he here, my lord? Why is General Sabo here? For this alone, he should be in jail. And I recommend that this be investigated. We don't need too much investigation because he, uh, the person who faxed it is there. The telephone, everything is there. It has gone all over the world. Our potential adversary now know the soft spot of Nigerian military defense setup. And this was a DMI who told you persistently that he has the interest of this nation at heart. You have it. My Lord, there are many things, but I will conclude maybe with just one more. Maybe I can take one more. I have to select. My Lord, General Sabu has told this Honorable Commission, General Sabu and Major Mustafa, about the death of late Alaji M.K. Wabiola. In my own opinion, I believe Abiola's death holds the key to all human rights violations in Nigeria. And it should be taken seriously. I am talking with hindsight, with what I know, and I think this commission should take it seriously. But there is something that worries me. General Sabo said, General Ishaya Bahameyi told him, let's kill Abiola as we kill, as we did to General Labacha. Good. One thing everybody knows. Are you sure you are quoting him correctly? Well, that's what he said. No, I, won't, I, don't, I can't remember exactly. But 
he said that he met Jirabami in the villa and Jirabami called him aside and said something to the effect that suggests that let something also happen to Abiola the way it happened to General Abacha. I don't think he said that. that what I right. thought he said was now that Abacha is dead, yes. Abiola must die to balance the equation. Balance. It's a, I interpret to be almost the same thing, sir, my lord. He said he whispered to him. He whispered to him. He whispered to him. My Lord, let me give you some insight. On 4th May, no, on 2nd June 1998, there was an attempt to release Gerardia and the detainees from just prison. It was foiled by a captain on duty there. I won't go into detail. On 4th June, General Bamey traveled to Kaduna for the passing out parade of NDA cadets. On 5th June, General Bamey traveled back to Lagos. As he was arriving in Lagos, General Abacha's ADC phoned him that Oga, that's the way General Abacha is called, wanted to see General Bame. General Bame tried to pray that, can't it wait till tomorrow? I'm just arriving in Lagos. It's about 7 o'clock, uh, 6.30. He said, no, Oga wants to see you today. The plane that brought General Bame from Kaduna to Lagos came back from Abuja to take him back to Kaduna, uh, to Abuja. He waited to see Abacha that, General Abacha that night. He didn't see him. The ADC kept telling him, Oga will see you, Oga will see you. The next day, 6th, Saturday, the ADC, Lieutenant Colonel Abdallah, phoned General Abame that Abacha will see him at midday. Midday came, nothing happened. The next day, General Abacha saw General Chairman Yasser Arafat who was going to the meeting at Wagadugu. He saw him off to the airport. General Bame was not part of the entourage. Abacha did not see him. In the morning of Monday, 8 June, General Bame got a call from Major Mustafa. Oga wants to see you in the office now. That was a little before 8 o'clock. As he was putting this call to Gina Bamei, who has been in Abuja since Friday, a call went to General Abdul Salami Abubakar. General Abasha Oga wants to see you in his office now. General Bamei, being the soldier he is, was able to get into uniform, dash to the villa. General uh, Abdul Salami, of course, as a more matured person, ah, do we need to come in uniform so early? Major Mustafa told him, no, you don't need to come in uniform. Just come. Both generals went to the villa. And that was when they found out that they were both summoned by General Abacha. First, they were asked to leave their security outside, which was strange. I think General Abacha struggled to go in with his security officer. General Abubakar, a more matured person, left his security in civil dress, in captain, they went in. They were ushered into an office, a waiting room in General Abacha's office. My Lord, why they were waiting? The Chief Justice of the Federation, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, and the Minister of Power and Sela Laji Bashir Dahatu came to join them there. So they were, it will appear that those people were not supposed to be in that office. But since they came and they were ushered there, they were all left there. My Lord, three times Major Mustafa came to assure them that General Abasha is coming to see them. Meanwhile, my Lord, General Abasha has been long stone dead. The generals were waiting for General Abasha. Meanwhile, in the residence, family members were planning the burial 
of General Abasha and what to do. The General of Police, Kumasi, was in the residence. General Abasha's junior brother, Major Abdul Kadiri, was in the residence. General Major Abdul Kadri worried about his brother getting a befitting burial. Asked, where are the top people of this government? Where is General Abdul Salam? Where is General Bami? Mustafa told him, I have been trying to get in touch with them. I have not been able to. Inspector, uh, Inspector General of Police Kumasi now pinch himself, say, ah, but I saw their vehicle outside. As a policeman he was, he didn't say anything. He went back to the office, opened the door, found this gentleman there. What are you waiting for? Oh no, we are waiting to see your guy. The man is stone dead. He now called General Abameyi and General Abdul Salami. Come, let's go to the villa, to the residence and see your guy. That's how he took them to the residence where they now knew that General Basha had died. From there, if you let me not go into certain details, but General Abame, you took charge of events from that point on as chief of army staff. He took total control of everything. My lord, why I am bringing this is you have been told that General Bame is ambitious, he has always wanted to overthrow government, this and that. In the military system, the chief of army staff is the strongest person in the military system. All the GOCs, General Bame has been chief of army staff for over three years as of June 8. All the GOCs were appointed under his tenure. They were all loyal to him. If General Bame wanted to take power, power was bestowed on him or by that, at that very moment. Because the only person that would have stopped him was there lying dead. General Bahameyi did not think of taking power. What did he do? He started coordinating. You do this one. Phone all the GOCs for me. He called for a PRC meeting. meeting. What he told me, word for word, there must not be a vacuum. There must not be a vacuum. All he needed to do was to announce himself the new head of state. All the GOCs were his friends and loyal to him. Because people are talking stories in this commission. I say, God, the commissioners must be really frustrated with the type of stories they get. Why can't somebody tell the truth once, just once? And forget acrimony. Jinaba Mei organized PRC meeting, took control of everything, and only he can tell what him and Jinaba Bubaka discussed. But I saw with my own eyes the minutes of PRC meeting. Everybody was allowed to talk on how the succession was to take place. Is it by hierarchy or by appointment? That was the only debate that took place in the PRC meeting. And General Bamey, being the most senior officer, must be the last person to talk. That's the military tradition. Because in the minutes of the meeting, they will not say who said this. A member said this. A member said this. The last person who talked was General Bahamei. It is said we go by hierarchy. That was how General Abdul Salami Abubakar became head of state. This meeting took place two times anyway. It went up to midnight because General Bahamei said there must not be vacuum. My Lord, if you go in, if you know the details of why they didn't want Jinnah Bahamei and Jinnah Labubaka to know that Jinnah Baba Abasha was dead, then you will know the intrigue that Jinnah Bahamei saved this nation from. If you think, why was the Chief Justice of the Federation invited? Was it for a swearing in of a new head of state? You will know 
what Jinabah may he save this nation from. If you think, why was the secretary of the government invited? Was it to announce a new head of state? You will know what Jinabah may has done for this nation. I'm saying it openly because I have no stake with anybody. In fact, I was angry that they didn't make me military administrator when they were in power. But I thank God today that they didn't make me. So I'm not really saying I'm doing it because they are my friends or anything. But it is the truth. If, my Lord, you now find out why did the ADC to General Abasha invite General Abasha Meyi to come to Abuja where it is now suspected that the head of state never invited him. Was it that they knew he was going to die? Was it that they knew there was a slow, a slow? Was it that they knew that he had a terminal illness and must die? And once he dies, they will have problem that they now decided to do something. And if General Bahamayi was outside, he's the only person who could create problem. Therefore, he must be within sight. There are many questions to ask. My Lord, when the PRC meeting was going on. General Sabo, I think he has said it in this commission, went in as usual, even though he's not a PRC member. It was General Bameyi that told him, get out! You are not a member of the PRC. This General Bameyi, who knew that General Sabo had written many petitions against him, General Bameyi, who has been at loggerhead they don't even see eye to eye. I will show you papers here where General Sabo went to the head of state many times and the head of state told them, look, we know General Sabo is lawyer. Is it this General Sabo that will now call General Sabo after he has driven him out of the PRC meeting to say what he claimed General Sabo told him? My Lord, I want us to get certain things clear. Truth has long leg. Lie has short leg. No matter how much lie tried to run, truth will catch up. I think truth is catching up today. My Lord, I have too many things to say, but I think I will save the time of this commission and the public by stopping here. We don't want to stop any witness. This is a very vital issue. My Lord, if I am to continue on the intrigue of General Sabo, I have here certain things I have put in place. I want to show the obsession of General Sabo. We are holding a dialogue with ourselves. It's very clear you can't finish today. So if we must adjourn at some stage, why not adjourn now and you continue tomorrow? On, this, part on this particular issue, I need to conclude it. All right. If, one you, con on now. if you conclude this issue, then yes. we adjourn. Okay, my lord. My lord, when Major Mustafa was arrested, what I want to show is the obsession with Jinaba Meyi and Jinaba Abubakar. They wanted to do something to them when Abasha died. Not possible. When Major Mustafa was arrested at Enugu after Jinaba Abasha died, this document, this diagram, was found in his house. My Lord, even before I tell that, okay. My Lord, I think the Premier that is working with me
Exit 14. As my Lord pleases. Can you read Exit 14? The only thing I want to show in this document is the first page. When Mustafa was arrested, they were investigated for, essentially for planning a coup. But the SIP in his findings say they were not really planning a coup. So they left them. But what led to that investigation that now talked of coup? Is this document, which was found in Mustafa's house at Enugu, it is in his own handwriting. He made sketches. And what he said, it was the, state, the, the, the document is called State of the Nation. In it, he said, he made sketches as a political, military, economic, international. On the military aspect, the first thing he wrote, Abu which is Abu Bakr. Abu Bameyi, accident, coup. He now drew a, a line down, leading to military confusion. Then young revolutionaries take over. He didn't put take over, he just said young revolutionaries. My Lord, look at General Abu Bakr's tenure. With this clear evidence of coup plotting because of general, because of obsession with General Bameyi and General Abu Bakr, who has been obstacle to this group. They wanted to do something on the eight. It was not possible. He got to Enugu, they were still planning. This thing got to General Abu Bakr, Commission of Inquiry. What did the general do, my lord? He didn't want to stay in power more than the time he wanted to stay. He didn't want anybody to say we are investigating coup endless again. They will begin to call name. This is involved. This is involved. Say, look, leave these people. Let them go. Let me not be detracted from my focus. My Lord General Abu Bakr did this in the interest of this nation. Otherwise, this is enough to. When there was no coup, they arrested the Anko and jailed uh, Obasanjo and Jira Obasanjo and Anko and jailed them. When there was no coup, now that there is evidence in your own handwriting that you were planning something, General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr and his team said, "Leave them, let them go. Let us keep to our promise. Let us not keep fall into the trap of previous administration." where you have endless investigation everybody wants to overthrow me I will stay for only 11 months leave it that was how they were left during this same investigation they found General Sabo in possession of weapons illegally my lord illegally the same offense for which they jailed General Yaradua for which he died General Bubaka say Leave Sabo, let him go. Today he is maligning General Abu Bakr. My Lord, Dr. Beko Ransom Kuti was jailed for life. Why? He faxed Konebelo Fadile statement. He they used his machine to fax a statement outside the country. Yet, we have our Oga here who faxed top secret document to the whole world. Nothing is done to him. What is good for the goose must be good for the gander. That's why I say, what is Jina Sabo doing here? A free man. I know what I'm saying, my Lord. There are enough atrocities. Not against me. Not against you. Against that nation called Nigeria. That he should not be a free man. We cannot allow this to, help, to continue. Are we not all Nigerians? 
I have been bold enough from beginning to tell people the truth. And thank God, I can show that I wrote it down and gave to him. And I told all the journals that were similar to me, if you do not stem this tide, it will be your turn tomorrow. Tomorrow has come. My Lord, I would like to end here. Uh, we have some problem. Uh, counsel for the commission, how many cases tomorrow? <laughs>